Abrar says, is looking after parents exclusive for sons? If the husband or in-laws of the daughters do not permit them to bring their parents at the daughter's home, what should the daughters do? Can they go against their husband's uh, uh, the, go against their husband's will and bring home their mother if sons are unwilling to keep their old mother? Abrar, the responsibility of the parents is not exclusive to a gender. It is to be shared equally by all their offspring. So if I have three boys and three girls, when I'm old, I am not the responsibility of my eldest son, as so many families think. Or my wife, the mother, is old. She's not the responsibility of the girls. Rather, all of my children share my responsibility. Having said that, my son is not obliged to take me in his house because if his wife says, no, I do not want to serve your father and it's not my responsibility to do so and I'd like to have my privacy in my own home, this is her God-given right. As for the daughters, if my wife says, I'd like to bring my mother to live with us, she's old, She's senile, and she needs people to take care of her. It is my God-given right to say, no, this is my house. I'm the man of the house. I do not allow you to do so because I don't want anyone in my house. Now, is, it this, is this the ideal thing? No, of course not. If I, as a husband, if my wife says this, I would say definitely she's more than welcome to stay for 10 years. Your mother is my mother. Let her come in. But people differ. And I cannot blame someone for demanding his own right. So as a girl, as a wife, you have no right in allowing or admitting anyone to enter your husband's house without his permission, let alone stay long term. He has all the right to do so. Now, your in-laws have no say in this, but most likely you are living in their homes. So again, you cannot do that without their permission. And most likely they would not permit this because you're living with them. So how would they introduce someone who's non mahram to them and a total stranger and a burden to their, to their house? This is not logical. Having said that, the responsibility lies among them all they should contribute financially to get a decent home for their parents, for the mother, for the father, with an adequate servant that would serve them, take care of them to the best of their ability. Now, this is a shared responsibility, but let us assume that the three boys are evil. They're not willing to contribute a penny. And they're not willing to take care of their old father or mother. And the three girls are also poor. They're dependent on their husbands. And their husbands are not approving of them to move in or to take in their mother-in-law, for example. So now the mother is stranded. No one is, ta is taking care of her financially, and no one is helping her, and she needs help. What to do? In this case, this becomes an obligation upon individuals. So if two of the girls, for example, refuse, and three of the boys totally refuse, and you are the only girl, Abrar, who is caring for her mom, you tried everything in your possession to care for her and allocate a place for a decent remaining days of her life to be spent in.
but without a veil. In this case, it becomes an obligation upon you. Even if you have to divorce your husband and take care of your mother, this is a must. Because this responsibility cannot be shared by anyone else. No one is willing to take the responsibility except you. And you know the great punishment awaiting for those who fail and the great reward awaiting those who do. In this case, it becomes an obligation upon you and Allah knows best.